Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another interview. What a special treat I have for you guys today. As you can probably tell from the thumbnail, I have two special guests today and they are international level athletes and GB representatives and also brothers, Max and Joe Litchfield. In this interview, we discussed a variety of different topics along the way, going from how they've been doing from the pandemic all the way through to their preparations going for the Olympic trials in April, which are held at London. As well as that, we discussed individual topics for both athletes, and it's definitely a one that you don't want to miss. I will leave links in the description below of their social media accounts, which I highly recommend that you go and check them out. If you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. Leave a like on this video and share my video with your friends and family who'd really help my channel out. So without further ado, let's get on with the interview. Enjoy. So for today's interview, it is with great pleasure to have two special guests on the series, which are international level athletes, Great Britain representatives, and also brothers, Max and Joe Litchfield. It's an honour to have you both on the series. Welcome, lads. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks very much for having us. So first of all, I would just like to ask, how have you both been getting on over the past year from the pandemic? I think I got, I think it's not actually been too bad for us. I think the I think it's almost a year to the day now since we like found out the news about trials, found out the news about like going into lockdown. Everyone kind of didn't know what was going on, how long it was going to last. Uh, so like the first 10, 12 weeks when we were in lockdown and we were like coming back into training after that. It was quite tough because no one really knew what was going on. We had to come back into the pool after 10 weeks and we were lucky to get back in, but we also came back in and had nothing to train for. There were there was obviously nothing in the summer. There were talks of ISL, but again, no one really knew if that was going to happen. Uh, there was a little summer thing we did at Loughborough. It was like a stand-up event rather than anything, so it was kind of training towards a training swim rather than training towards a race. So it was kind of tough for that first bit. <laughs> But then like, after the summer, we kind of had a lot of clarity of what was going on with ISL. We knew it was going ahead. Uh, we all kind of just stri we kind of strived for that. We were lucky to be out there when the second lockdown hit. I think we missed five weeks of the second lockdown, came back, uh, pretty much had normal training ever since. And since then, it's been normal training. Just you're either in your house or you're at the pool or you're at the shops. There's nothing really in between. And you can't really go and have a meal with your mates. You can't go out and socialise whenever you have the time, really. But... Like everyone's like that, so we're the lucky that we can actually go and sort of do some sport. And uh, I think for a lot of us, it's we kind of took the year as a whole and just thought, you know what, like we can't do anything about it. It's happening to everyone in the world. We just make the most of training while we've got the access to the facilities and we've been sort of given a bit. We're quite lucky to have the access and we've sort of taken it and sort of. I think we're actually both in very good places right now. Hopefully, leading into the uh, trials in a few weeks. Max, I was going to say there, and you know. It's We've been like we have been dead lucky. I think that's pretty much the overarching theme, really. We've been really lucky um, in the position we've we've been given, um, and yeah, just you know, just you know, in a, in a very good position that we can train, and both very excited to be you know to be in a position where we can go to you know Olympic trials in three weeks' time, and uh, you know hopefully compete and get ourselves hopefully on that on that uh, plane to Tokyo. Definitely, and it is great to hear that you've been keeping active and keeping going through the pandemic. And it, it's it's like so it's not really stopped you at all. But um, yeah, it's really good to see. Um, also going through like the lockdown, the pandemic. Last Saturday, the twentieth of March, it was lockdown litter picking day that you organised, Max. Uh, it was a, such a great idea and for such a good cause that myself and my auntie took part in it. And we walked about ten k and collected over a hundred pieces of litter. And the amount of kind messages we got along the way, it was great. But it, it's just, why can't other people do like like do it as well? You know what I mean? Um, so could you be able to tell us what the inspiration was behind organising this day and, and why you're so passionate about having a clean, eco-friendly environment? Yeah, of course. Well, firstly, thanks for uh, thanks for your contribution. It was it was amazing to see you out there as well. And um, yeah, I guess. Um, well, I've always been in conscious of the planet and conscious of, you know, I've always been good at recycling and, and stuff like that since I was a kid. Um, but then kind of like last year when obviously we went into our, into the first lockdown, um, I just started doing more research on it and, and looking into into different things to do with 
how I could help really and how, you know, how I could make small changes to make a big difference. And the first thing I actually came across was a company called Bamboo Brush, who, um, who are amazing. They do, they do some awesome, awesome stuff, but you know, it was, it was how simple that change was from a, you know, a normal plastic toothbrush that's, you know, that's going to be there for, for thousands of years um, compared to a bamboo one, which will biodegrade in, you know, in a year, probably by the time you've thrown it out. And that was kind of what's got, got me going into it. And, you know, it kind of just spiraled from there, really. And then when, once I got back into Loughborough and we were managing to train again, I thought, you know what, let's go out and do some litter picking too. I'd seen other people doing it on Instagram. And um, and it kind of shocked me, you know, the amount of litter that you do see. And I think once you notice it once, you don't stop noticing it. So like every time I'm out in the car now, I'll be driving, you know, to the pool or, you know, to, to the shops, whatever. You, you see one little bit and you just, you can't stop. It's everywhere. Um, and it is really sad to see that, you know, we live in a world where people think it's it's right and it's OK to do that. Um, it's it's really it's really horrible, to be honest. But, um, yeah, the, the, the litter pick day was kind of to be honest, it was it was mainly like my mom and my sister that were pushing it. Um, and a couple of family friends, they said, you know what, let's do this. Let's do this day where we can, you know, initially it was just going to be us. And then we thought, well, let's, you know, let's open it out. Let's try and get as many people across the country involved as we can. And, um, you know, right now, I think I've just done some some numbers now. We're still getting a few people sending some pictures. We've had over like 1,100 people doing it. We've, we've collected about 300 bags of, of litter between us all, plus all the other weird stuff like tyres. And my mum and dad found a toilet. Like, what? Right. why are someone throwing a toilet out? It's, I, don't, I don't know. But, um yeah it was amazing to see so many people helping and uh yeah it was awesome that 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 everyone across the country and we've had people in australia getting involved which is which is even just just amazing so um yeah i mean i could ramble on for for, for days about this but um yeah it was an amazing amazing weekend and so happy to see so many people um getting involved in you know in a really tough time for an amazing cause yeah and like you say it, it is such an amazing cause and like fair to say that was successful as well especially like people from Australia getting involved and the numbers speak volumes as well and hopefully more people will like carry on doing it as well rather than just having a specific day for it and it co- continues to help and spread that awareness yeah definitely that's my that's my hope really that you know it's amazing to have a day where we can all do it but you know it's it's about hopefully educating people and not educating people but making people aware it's it's an issue and hopefully you know every time people go out on a walk now, you know, take a bag with you, you know, don't go out walking the dogs, just take a, take a bag, take a bin bag with you and, you know, pick up a few bits on the way and it'll make a huge difference. Definitely. Now moving on to you, Joe, uh, you're currently a student athlete at Loughborough University. What is it like balancing with uni work and also with the high demands of swimming? Uh, it's always been tough. It, since you're, since we're young, you kind of like, you kind of like train yourself at school. You kind of, I'd probably, I'd probably say it's easier at the moment, like, because I fully prioritise swimming over my school now. Like, I'll do it on the side, my uni work, and I'll make sure I get everything on time and I'll want to do as well as I can. But, like, swimming is probably my life and I've sort of been building up to this point in my career and I'll fully prioritise that. But, like, when I was younger, um, like, balancing swimming, balancing school was quite hard. And But it's just like, just like, I think Max already explained it well, he, like, just do it. Like, don't don't delay it. Like, if you have homework, just get it done as quick as you can. If you have free periods, so I'll just time manage well and don't think, oh, I'll just save it and do it in the lesson before I've got my lesson tomorrow. Like, when I was younger, I was I wasn't the best at it, but I wasn't bad at it. Like, I get my homework on time, and the teachers would help me as well if I needed help on extensions and whatnot. But at the moment, I think balancing was quite well. Like, I was at Hallam for my first two years of my course, so I, it was a bit harder there because I did a full year one, year two, uh, and then there was some complications with Sheffield. I moved to Loughborough. I had to defer my uh, third year because I failed a couple of modules at the end of Hallam because I was in Loughborough, but studying at Hallam, so it was all online. For me, I was having to look at lecture slides and that was about it. Uh, I ended up deferring a year, finished my second year at Hallam from Loughborough, uh, and then I ended up just like transferring my final year and I've split it, so it, Splitting my year really helps because it just takes obviously half the pressure off my shoulders and I can kind of focus fully on swimming, but then just sort of tick by my uni work and make sure I get it all done to the level where if I was doing a full uni course with no swimming, I'd probably get it sort of the same level as how I would if I was like that. Uh, but I think just time management sort of just don't stress. Like if you can get, if you 
got an idea on an assignment and you haven't really had sort of the, the lecture that explains the assignment yet just get ahead and do it like write a few bits like be like pre, like be one thing I was quite bad when I first came at Loughborough like they were like because obviously I was like the new guy in third year and they didn't really know me and they they sort of but they were like they obviously they're quite respectful of how I who I am in swimming and what I've done but they say like just just be sort of proactive with me like if you're going away on a camp, just let me know weeks in advance and that we can sort of work out, we can sort out what the main weeks are. You might not have to do all the lecture slides. You can sort of, they can sort of help you in that way. And as long as you're proactive with them, they're going to help you. They're going to sort of give you the advice you need. So just, yeah, I think being proactive, time management and just not putting yourself under too much stress right at the end of the year when you've got to get all the assignments in. Definitely. And that that's such a key message as well, because a lot of student athletes out there usually don't know how to handle that. And I think what you're saying is right, is like, just do the work as quick as possible. And then you've got like, you're swimming to focus on straight after. And it's also good to have something else on your plate as well as swimming rather than just constantly focusing on swimming. So yeah, that's a really good message there, Joe. Thank you. When I was doing my research about you both, I noticed that your dad, Peter Litchfield, is a former professional goalkeeper in football. With his high-level sport and background, did this inspire you both to get involved with sport? And why did you choose swimming over than football? I, I think, well, I'm, I'm still amazed that to this day that one of us didn't actually go into football, I guess. And my dad's a big fat, big City fan and he somehow didn't force any of us to support City. It's pretty mad, really. Goes <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I think, you know, we've always been sporty since we were, well, me, Joe, and my, and my sister have all been really sporty since we were really young. And my mum was the same. She played netball and volleyball and, and all sorts. So um, it was just something that, you know, we, we all wanted to be part of, you know, different sports teams when we were younger. And, you know, we, we both did play football up to, I mean, I played till I was about 12, I think, maybe. Maybe, I'm, I'm not too sure, somewhere around there. And Joe, very similar. Um, you know, and that was the point where we decided it was like, you know, we need to, prioritize either football or swimming like what what route do you want to go down and we both you know both enjoyed football but we both knew we were actually better at swimming so um yeah it was I mean dad dad would never you know force us into a sport it was always he just wanted us to be happy and, and do sports that we loved and enjoyed and and, and just when when we stopped playing football I didn't mean we just focused entirely on swimming because obviously we're still very young so you know we still played football at school and stuff and we'll both play basketball um at high school and college and um we're still involved in lots of other sports which is which is so so key at a young age for you know for, for fundamental move, moving skills and and everything so um but yeah I, I guess it was just you know we're a very sporting family but we both knew we were um well we had more opportunity in swimming to to potentially do more than we did in football um you know both love to have been professional footballers but we both <laughs> probably knew it was a bit too a bit too much of an ask Especially for me. <laughs> Do you have anything to add on to Joe? Uh, I think, like, we just, like Max said, like, we saw from a young, like, if we'd have kept playing football, potentially, you never know, like, you get scouted somewhere and you, you could kick off, kick start your career. But obviously, a lot of people want to make it in football because of how big it is. And mm. there's obviously, there's a smaller field in swimming, but also, like, when we were younger, we were winning Yorkshire medals, we were winning regional medals. So it was kind of like, okay, like, is there something here? Can they make make it on to nationals? And I think when we, when I sort of quit swimming was when I started like easily making nationals on my main events and also like pushing for finals, pushing for medals. So I was like, okay, I'm starting to hit like the junior years. Should I maybe now just focus solely on swimming? Don't want to risk an injury going into uh, say a junior meet where I can qualify for European juniors. So, so I did the smart thing. It's quite tough. I think I really enjoyed football. I think I remember ringing my mum when I was nearly in tears. Like, oh, I think I need to quit. But <laughs> even at a young age, I was kind of like, okay, I need this is the right this is the right decision. Like, much as I love playing football on the side of swimming, that you somehow need to do. But yeah, like Max, I we picked up basketball in school, which looking back probably wasn't the smartest idea, based on the ankle injuries that can come from it. But <laughs> it was definitely something that sort of gave us a break from swimming, and it was another sort of sport that's got us involved in sort of just watching um, an, array, an array an array of sport. Yeah, absolutely. Like like you said there, Matt, like before Max and Joe, that um, having a wide range of sports at a young age, it is really key. And then as you get older, you soon find out which sport suited for you and everything happens for a reason. And luckily 
is are in the sport of swimming today. And now with moving on to your swimming careers, uh, Max, your first international call up was at the 2014 Commonwealth Games, your first senior, and have made a senior team every year after that. Uh, you unfortunately had to withdraw from the 28, 2018 Commonwealth due to an injury, but then later competed that year at the Europeans, impressively secured a silver and a bronze medal in the 400 IM and 200 IM respectively. How were you able to stay so resilient and persevere through your injury to then have a very incredible uh, Europeans? And what was that journey like for you? Yeah, it was it was really tough, actually. Um, you know, that's probably one of the one of the hardest things I've had to do is that whole that year from from 2017. So my, my, my shoulder first got bad just before Worlds, actually, in, in 2017. So the year before um, I had an injection just before Worlds, which managed to get me through that period um, of a couple of weeks. Um, and then kind of just went back to normal after after a little summer break and you know, thought everything was was OK and it was going to be fine. Um, and then it all just came back and, and hit me really bad in kind of October time. We we're just about to go to altitude when it when it first when it first came back. And um, yeah, that whole period between that that October and then um, well, the summer of, of 2018, I guess, when, when Europeans happened was was really tough. And um, especially that missing the Commonwealth Games, you know, I was at that point I was Commonwealth record holder in both. Yeah, both the two and the four I am. And, um, you know, I was potentially going to be able to go there and, and, and win, you know, two, three medals maybe. And, um, you know, well, just there's the opportunity to race a Commonwealth Games in Australia was was, was enough reason to, to be disappointed. Um, but yeah, that was such a tough decision, but one that was so, so important because, you know, I could have gone to Commonwealth Games and, and, and you know, potentially got a medal or, you know, made made a final or whatever. But, you know, I might not have been a, in, a, in a great enough position anyway to even do that with my shoulder because I had not quite built the fitness back up that I needed to um the shoulder might have just given way on me we just we just we just don't know and you know I kind of said you know what we've got Europeans in the summer let's make that you know that's that's a meet that's, that's still very very important and you know a Commonwealth, Commonwealth game it's, it's very different it's hard to compare Commonwealth games and Europeans but you know Europeans is a very very tough meet you know there's lots of amazing countries in Europe in swimming and um you know it was like let's let's focus solely on the Europeans that's forget the Commonwealth Games. I know that's a really, really hard thing to do, but in the long run, that's going to be what we want to do. You know, we're focusing on the Olympics in well, what we thought was two years time. Obviously it's three um, given everything that's gone on since then. But um, you know, that was the main focus. And if I was going to go to Commonwealth Games, make my shoulder worse, we're back at square one, you know, we're then putting things in jeopardy in the future, potentially putting the fact that I might not be in this situation I am now, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's weighing up what your situation is and what's the best the best route for you to go down. And, and, and in that situation, it was for me to pull out the Commonwealth Games. And like I said before, it was a tough decision, but, um, you know, one that that, that was necessary. Um, and yeah, I just, that whole year was very tough, but staying, I've, I've mumbled on there, but staying focused on what you want to do, having that goal in mind um, and, you know, working day in, day out, at little baby steps to, to get back to where, where you need to get back to and, and working with the people around you is, is massively important. Definitely. And that, that's a great message and a great insight of what your journey was like and going through that very challenging time and unfortunately having to withdraw, but then having an amazing comeback of the Europeans, it, it, it's really great to see. And hopefully like people listening to this will inspire, like if they do have an injury, like it's, it's not the end of the world. Like there is other chances out there. I think with um with that as well, you don't have to think of it as an injury. You think of it as now, you know, you've had COVID. we well, not had COVID, but we've been through COVID. You've been out of the water for, for I mean, it's, it's slightly different timings in terms of the shoulder, but you know, you've been out of the water for a certain period of time. You've not been able to swim. You've not been able to do gym. You've not been able to do your land training as normal or, or whatever it is. That doesn't mean that in a year's time, you can't be back. You don't just lose lose the talent that you have. You know, you work hard enough and you keep fit in this period that you're in now or you've kept fit in this period we've been in now. And, you know, in, in the next couple of weeks when the pools start to reopen again, um, you know, you might not be back where you, you were straight away. In fact, you won't be. But as long as you know that and know that in, you know, in five, six, seven, 12 months time, you're going to be back at your potential and where you can be, then that, that's what you've got to think about. You've got to think about assessing what you want from the next 
12 months from the next four years from the next you know wh whatever the time frame is and um, don't let this period we've had now put you off um, you know reaching those goals whatever it might be definitely and that's a great message for anyone out there that is listening like it's not the end of the world like it's now with Boris's announcement like for the public uh, pools reopening very soon so it is exciting time and it, it is slowly coming back together again um, Joe, you've had an amazing junior career by securing four silver medals at the 2015 Commonwealth Youth Games and a bronze at the World University Games in 2017. Very similar to Max, like your first major senior national meet was at the 2018 Commonwealths. Uh, what was that experience like for you swimming as a junior and the transition going into senior? That is really good. Like, it's always hard. Like, you just don't really, you, you can do well at junior, but then all of a sudden, like, your junior's career just switches and you're now a senior athlete and you've got a age is just this number like you've got to look up to the best in your country and beat them and like I, it's been a slow progress like I was the, my last year as a junior was 2016 uh and then sort of moved into 2017 and I wasn't able to make worlds or anything but I kind of just thought okay I'm in a world university games it's bigger than nationals it's a nice international meet I actually went there and raced a couple of Jap the Japanese boys, Daya Sato and Hagino, which for me at that point, I'd just finished my juniors and I was like, oh my God, I'm right. I was in the final next to them and I actually got the podium with them, which was incredible. And uh, it was just like a, like a little step on the way in my hope for like senior development. And then, like I said, making the Commonwealth Games, I qualified for the games from that meet. And I went there, I didn't quite swim sort of how I wanted to, but it was, it was a weird year with like moving from Sheffield to Loughborough and I didn't really know where I was sort of mentally and physically. And it was kind of just like, okay, I'm going to go there. I didn't see my best, but at the same time, I went to Australia. I had an incredible experience. I was racing Chad McClough, all the Australian boys, sort of the big, biggest names in the Commonwealth. And for me at that point, again, it was just quite surreal. And it's sort of just another stepping stone. Following year again, I went to the World University Games, but went there with the intent of knowing I can win medals. Uh, and then sort of that's just propelled me again through COVID and then going to ISL and just sort of it's been a real, a real step by step year on year basis but I've sort of developed sort of how you might imagine a sort of a standard development to a senior athlete would be like you see sort of the ones that kind of jump straight into it and that they're, they're obviously the, the more incredible ones on the team the faster ones but I've sort of been like a slow progress and I stick at it and I think it's slowly sort of uh what's the word it's quint it's sort of getting rewarded for like the effort i've been putting in over the last few years and yeah it's, it's it's been hard it's been tough but i think just not sort of getting worried that you're not going to make it sometimes is the best way and sort of just don't think like oh i was i was a junior medalist i was winning world junior medals and i'm not doing anything on the senior stage they just it'll happen it happens to, if you keep the work you keep working hard it's gonna it's gonna come to you and you'll get what you you get what you get, you'll get out what you put in. You'll uh, if you're if you're willing to put the work in, if you're willing to sort of build yourself as a senior athlete, as a better athlete, you'll get the rewards at the end of that. And when when it comes, and it, I'm not saying it's come for me yet, and I, I want so much more out of my career, but I'm making those steps, and I'm slowly getting there. And yeah, it's it's been hard, but I'm, it's, I'm yeah, slowly getting there. <laughs> Definitely. And that's a great message because going from junior to senior, it, it's no easy transition and everyone's transition is different. But as long as you stick at it and keep on going, then the, the, the rewards are still going. Like you, like what you touched on about ISL there as well. Like you had an incredible pop, pop, uh, performance at ISL with the New York Breakers. So moving, actually moving on to ISL, um, you both represent different teams. Max, you represent Energy Standard. Joe, you represent New York Breakers. Um, Max, Energy Standard were ISL champions in 2019. What was it like being a part of the winning team in the first season and obviously having the final in Las Vegas? Yeah, it was it was amazing. You know, that first season we were, you know, I guess we, we all knew it was going to be different. We all knew it was going to be exciting. Um, but I don't think anyone quite expected it to be quite as, as close and quite as, um, I don't know, it was just, very different to any sort of swimming meet you would normally experience was 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 what it, what it was in Vegas really, um, you know, it was so so tight and it literally did, did come down to that to that last race to the skins race and 
you know, to be part of the winning team in the first year was was incredible. Um, you know, I, I I was dragged along by most of my teammates, to be honest. But um, yeah, like it, it was awesome to be part of it. Um, you know, it's something that's that's very different, and it is changing the sport in in some extent. Um, but but it's a, it's it's a good step forward. You know, it's something that's it is very different to the traditional uh, swimming you know calendar, I suppose. But um, you know. It, it's a good step in the right direction. Um, and um, yeah, it was, it was amazing to be part of that. And I mean, Vegas was, was, was pretty cool. Like to be in Vegas, I guess it's just, you know, it's just cool to say you were, you were there in Vegas. It's um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a weird place, but it was awesome to be there. And um, you know, the whole atmosphere that's created by the ISL with the light lighting and, you know, the way it's all set up and, um, it, it really is incredible. It, it's hard to explain, but um, you know the whole team environment and everything that goes into it um, is amazing. Um, and the amount of people that you meet, and you know, there's so, I understand is the, the the biggest um, example of it. There's just so many countries in that in that team. You know, there's I think it's 20, 20 odd different countries uh, in the same team, and it's it's just amazing that you would never you never ever ever get that um, in any other. Um, format of, of swimming um, and it, it's just amazing to be part of that and to, to learn so many different cultures and to make so many new friends and, and compete against you know the best swimming in the world um, is, is awesome so yeah it's um, it's very cool. Yeah I think that's the beauty with ISL is like having the different nationalities and meeting different people that you don't normally speak to at a competition for example and um, and watching that final it looked incredible like the pool looked phenomenal and Obviously, the crowd there, everything, the atmosphere looks so, so good. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. And swimming next to Stato when he broke the world record was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a very impressive swim. Um, Joe, like I said, you represent the New York Breakers and you made your ISL debut last year. Um, you said, I feel as though New York Breakers had the biggest improvement from 2019 to 2020, and I definitely think that you were the help for that especially when you had that um, impressive performance with Ryan Murphy and the 50 back skins. I think that was one of the first matches. Um, what was that skin races like? And overall, how was your first ISL experience? Uh, I think overall, uh, pretty surreal. I didn't really expect what it was going to be like before we went. No one really knew what the, like, the COVID regulations and everything was going to be like when we were there. And I think because we were getting tested quite regularly, like it was quite relaxed and it wasn't like, okay, you're in your room or you're at the pool. It was quite like you could, you could mix, but obviously you mix with social distancing, masks and whatnot. But like the actual experience was just incredible. Like Max said, like the mixing of countries, I think the breakers are the same. I think we had like 18 different countries on our team. So like you'd always have that sort of joking around. You'd learn about different cultures, laughing at each other, sort of having that little bit of sort of intercultural banter, that sort of, and that really like sort of helps I think the breakers like we we said it to ourselves a lot. I don't know if other teams said it to themselves. I think we were definitely one of the teams that had the most fun and had, like had the most relaxed because I think we didn't really expect anything. And as a team, anything would be better than the year before because obviously the year before they came dead last, I think. Or yeah. Uh so for us it was making the semis was the real goal. And I think we kind of got screwed a little bit with the heats we got because like there was a few in the first one we ended up being the fourth team of the three teams who came in the top four last year so for us we went into that like well what's the point we're going to lose even if we have the best sims we're going to lose overall and then the next one it was London against the other three worst teams so there was a lot of debating but we kind of just dealt with it we took it took it on the head and we were like you know what we just got to go into the ones we could beat a team in and just beat them teams and we did that when we had to we put a really good fight up against Iron and unfortunately came out on the lower end of Emery Sachi in the skins. But uh, like we, we put up a good fight and we sort of showed the world that okay, we are the we may maybe getting beaten by all the best teams, but put us in a put us in a fight against a team we're gonna do well against. And I think we really stepped up to that quite well. Uh, but like there was just no pressure on us, I think, and we just all went in there, sort of had fun. Like Michael didn't start soon well and he's obviously the head captain on the first meet, but he sort of came through as the meet progressed. And People were just kind of stepping up. There was a few holes, with, I'm guessing, I think they're going to fill next year. There was a few sort of races where they, they obviously identified that we were quite weak in the relays because we lost the Australians who couldn't come out. I think we had the likes of Cam McAvoy, Matt Temple, Jack McLaughlin, who would have been three solid 
uh, relay swimmers for us. But I think on a whole, like the actual, the whole experience on the breakers, I think it was just, it was just great. And to get, be a part of that and to go out there. And I went out there with the intent to hopefully show the world, like what I can do in the swimming world. And I think I would sort of surpassed what I was expecting. I would get in, like you mentioned the skins, getting in racing head to head against Ryan Murphy. Like there was a lot of, I think he stole all my points, but when I'm racing the world record holder, the fastest man on, on earth backstroke ever, like, you can't believe, I'm just some guy who's just turned up on the New York Breakers team first I'd be no one knew who I was no one expected me to make that final and for me it was just excellent like I got I knew if I'd have gone through the first round I'd have sort of more endurance I think than a few of the guys who were in there so I was like well if I get through the first round why can't I make it for the second round and so I took that mindset into the second race and the second race really ruined me and I had nothing left for the final one but again just being next to Ryan Murphy and then being next to Caleb Dressel on a few races, I nearly touched him out on a 50 fly, which again, I don't think anyone would have predicted that to happen. And I wouldn't have even predicted that to happen. I sort of surpassed all my goals that I set out and yeah, just getting in there and sort of making a name for myself and sort of being amongst the best in the world. It's just great for summer who, like I said, making those steps to a senior level. And hopefully now in the future, people will things from me and uh I'll, I'll i want i want to get in there again i want to race ISL next season and sort of take it to the next level i think uh my assistant coach the one our old coach Andy Wallace, gets our three seasons and you'll be getting mvps out of that one, maybe <laughs> i've got but that's like a, a goal that he's just set me joking about it but uh no nah, it's great and sort of just being on a team like the Breakers for me, being on a team like the Breakers for me, like I can sort of do, I can sort of pick my events. Whereas if I was on a team like Energy Standard, I probably wouldn't be able to do that. I'd sort of be like the guy who gets put on an event and rather than be able to pick and do relays, et cetera. So it's, for me, it's really good being on the Breakers as well. Definitely. And it, it, like you said before, like it looked as though that you had the most fun out there when you was coming out doing different handshakes, fist bumps, presenting the box, Michael Andrew. Like it was really good to see and it looked, it looked as though that was really good fun. Um, I mentioned this to Tom Dean when we talked about the ISL that I don't know if you were aware there was a fantasy ISL going around yeah and we we organized well I organized one with my squad uh, at the club and um, I put you in my team quite regularly because I know that you were doing well and, uh, and everything and luckily I managed to win with the, with um, with my teams at, towards the end so thank you for getting me loads of points definitely from Joe and not me. I think. We saw that. I was saying, like, we, we, I wish I was worth seven million. Like, I think that's what they were rating it, weren't they? Yeah. They were like, on millions. I was like, I wish I, I wish I was worth that much. But <laughs> well, no, it was actually quite good for us because it, it was good investment. Um, but, yeah, definitely. And it looked like the ISL, it was great to watch some live swimming again and seeing all you guys race. Um, moving towards this year, how are, how are your preparations going um, towards trials and then hopefully all, the all and crucial Olympics? Um, yeah, going it's all going really well. With, with again, like coming back to what we touched on at the start, we have been really really lucky. Um, you know, we've managed to race twice in Manchester this past weekend, just gone. No, weekend before that, um, and the month before that as well. Um, and that's a real good taster of what it's going to be like at trials. I think I think it'll be very very similar. Um, in trials in three weeks' time, you know, be, you know, pretty much the exact same people there. Um, you know, we're going to be in a strange little bubble setting with in, in a hotel, and you know, that's hotel and pool, and that's all you can do. Um, but yeah, we, we're all we're all swimming really well. You know, our squad here in Loughborough with Dave. Um, you know, everyone's everyone's on fire. Everyone's swimming really fast, and it's awesome to see that, especially um, you know, in season. You know, we've got we're still you know starting taper. Mid, middle of this week and um you know it's going to be awesome to to see what we're all capable of once, once we actually do rest so um yeah very very exciting and um you know it's awesome when you you know you, you all are doing swimming fast and swimming well in training but also in racing um and it kind of just helps helps all of you push each other on because you see someone doing some amazing times and swimming incredibly in training or in a race and it you know just it just just put into perspective that you know like this is i'm doing the same stuff as this person and you know it, it's awesome to see and um you know some people that have struggled um over the last couple of years are starting to to swim really fast again which is you know it's just for all the hard work they've put in it's amazing to see so 
yeah, all in a really good place. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, agreed. Like, I think for a lot of us, I, I think myself definitely. Uh, I think Abby would. We had a few interviews and we would speak speak about pretty much the same things. We've this last year, like with ISL, it's sort of been our, our breakout season, and I think we're definitely in probably the best like, like spots of our lives. Uh, I think last year going into Tokyo 2020. I'd have had a chance, I think, going into trials, I think, on the 100 back. So I've had a few outside chances of making the team. But I think this this year, I think there's just a whole, nother, a whole new year sort of building strength, building confidence. And I think we've got, I've got a real shot. And like, if you'd have told me this a few years ago, I'd probably not believe you. But like, just the, the training we've been doing, like, I think the entire squad and our squad has been doing like things they've not done before, been racing in season times that they've not done before. And it's just really great to see. Great to see us all doing it because obviously with one person does it and someone else does it, it's sort of like a group feeling that we're all swimming well and we've all got a chance. And I think if if I think there's about I think there's maybe fifty percent, maybe a bit more of our squad that have a shot at sort of the Olympics. And if we can all get there, it'd be a great to sort of show like okay, this is just one squad from Loughborough and we've all kind of come through and all made the team together. And I think it'd be really nice along then with Mel's guys in that squad. I think there could be a good chunk. Uh, going from the Luffer team. Definitely. And like you mentioned before about Manchester International, like there was really impressive swims and it was great to see both from both um, competitions in Manchester and especially like with you guys in Loughborough, like there were outstanding performances, like you said about Abbey Wood and including yourselves. Like It's really, really good to see. And I wish you both the very best of luck towards trials and hope that you make that all important games this year. Thank you very much. Uh, That's all the questions that I've got time for today. But um, before you go, do you mind if we play a game of how many times have I swum that race? We could try. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much um, this game, I have done an event each for you both where I've researched how many times you have swum that race. I've selected the, the event at random. Um, I'll give you three chances and I'll say higher or lower each time um, of what you guess. And yeah, it's, it's pretty much trying to get as close as possible to that answer. How many times you have swam that? So Joe, we'll start with you first. The event I have selected for you is 200 IM and this is all long course, including heats, semi-finals and finals. Okay. So how many times do you think you've swum the 200 IM? 97. Oh, higher. 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 Oh, 160. Or oh, lower than 160. Uh, 142. Oh, you were very close. You got, um, it's 140. You swam the 200 IM, which is very impressive. I thought it would be more than that, to be honest. Well, the same goes for you, Max. Um, 400 IM. 400 IM. Oh, it's going to be lower than 200 IM, isn't it? Because of the semis. Um, let's go around 100. Higher than 100. Okay. Uh, 100 let's go... 145? Lower than that. Right, we're in the middle there. 126, are we? Yeah, it's going to be somewhere. Because I've been, been swimming longer than you, but then you do less 400 IMs. Um, yeah, 100 and... 128. <laughs> if you went in the middle, you would have got it. Of uh, Joe's 126 and your 127. I was going to say... <laughs> it's 127. Wow. wow. That's a lot of 400 rounds. Yeah. Uh, I've done this with Hannah Miley and hers was 231. I say, Hannah's a wee nuts. <laughs> yeah. She guessed 230 and I was like, oh my God. Really? And, that, and that was the first goal. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope you had fun playing that little game. Um, and that is what we've got all time for. So thank you once again, once again, Max and Joe, for being a part of this interview series. I will leave a link to your social medias down below in the description. And... Like I say, I wish you the very best of luck for trials in a few weeks' time and hope that you make 
do that make that playing for Tokyo. Thank you for having us. Thank you.